بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم أما بعد حبت في الله السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته حياكم الله and we ask that Allah سبحانه وتعالى the Almighty accepts our good and forgives our evil and protects us from كل سوء مكرو and may Allah عز وجل rectify our condition and affairs and may Allah increase us in our ability to come closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and bless us to be of the mutawakkileen mumutatahireen wasabireen and all of those who Allah tabarak wa ta'ala is pleased with from his slaves from the servants of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ahabatifillah No doubt, ikhlas lillah and ubudiyat lillah are some of the most important affairs in our lives. Rather, that is even the maqsad, that is even the intent of our creation because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Fi kitabihi al-kirim, wama khalaqtu al-jins, wama khalaqtu al-jinn wa l-ins illa li'abudu. I've not created mankind in the jinn except for the purpose of worshipping me. So Allah Taala created us with the purpose of worshipping Him. And have an ubudiyat al ubudiyya, you know, actualizing that servitude to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That we should humble ourselves, we should sacrifice ourselves, we should. Draw, seek to draw near to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and strive to please Him, tabarak wa ta'ala. That is the shan of the mu'min. That's the affair of the believer. And we know that the ulama of sunnah in contemporary times have classified this concept of Islamic monotheism, tawheed, into three categories three categories not a fourth so we do not reject the hakami of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that Allah tabarak wa ta'ala is the lawgiver abadin because that is as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions that the hukum lillah in al hukum lillah verily the the uh, the the law is for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The judgment is for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is al-hakam. He is the creator of the heavens and earth and he subhanahu wa ta'ala subjects his creation to him and his divine law is to be ruled by. But we want to emphasize as the scholars of the sunnah, not the scholars of takfir, not the scholars of fear, not the mubtedia, those innovators who emphasize hakamiyah to such an extent, all they do is make takfir of the leaders and take fear of the believers. They don't cease to moisten their tongue in attacking Ahlul Sunnah and making takfir of the Muslims in general. Wa'iyadim billah, wa'iyakum minhum. So the scholars mention three categories, and they are as follows: Tawheed, Arububiyah, Wa Tawheed, Al Uluhiya, Wa Tawheed, Al Asma'i Wa Sifat. The scholars mention these three categories: Tawheed, Arububiyah, meaning the lordship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that Allah is the Lord, the creator, the sustainer, the provider, and He is the lawgiver, subhanahu wa ta'ala, al hakim All of that, the mulk kulhu lillah, it's all for Allah because He created everything and sustains and provides for everything. The second category of Tawheed al-Habatifillah is Tawheed. Al Uluhiya, or also known as Tawheed Al Ibadah, meaning that all the worship goes to Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. And the scholars also mention, in in light of this, that uh, the one who believes and acknowledges that Allah 
is the the lawgiver and the Lord of Rabbil Alameen, the creator and sustainer of all things, that then it yastelzimu tawheed al-ibadah or tawheed al-uluhiyah, meaning that when you acknowledge that Allah is the Lord of all things, you should therefore, that necessitates, then you worship that Lord, the creator of the heavens and earth and all things. The third category of habit is tawheed al-asma'i wa sifat, meaning the divine uh, names and attributes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has unique uh, 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 names and attributes that only belong to him for example Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, possesses rahma that is from his sifat and he is ar-rahman the most uh, the most merciful so he has the trait of mercy and he is the most merciful and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, There is nothing that is like him. And he is the all hearing and all seeing. So right there, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he says he negates, he begins with the nafi. He negates that anything resembles him, subhanahu wa ta'ala, and anything or anything in his creation is like him or that those names and attributes belong to anyone else. And then at the same time, he affirms that he is the all-hearing and all-seeing, meaning he has traits of hearing and sight, but his are divine uh, traits of hearing and sight. They are perfect, whereas the creation possesses attributes of hearing and sight, but it's naqs. That's the farq. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is perfect, complete, and his attributes are divine. The creation has attributes, but those attributes are unlike Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and cannot be compared to Allah because they are a nux shortcoming. For example, I can see down here this little bit of uh, water, if you will. I can see that. And I even can hear the raindrops and things like this. However, it's, my sight is limited. I can't see what's in there, the details. I can't hear anything in the water or near the water. It's nux. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala hears everything, sees everything. لَيْسَ كَمِتْ لِهِ شَيْهُ هُوَ سَمِيرُ بَصِيرُ وَصَلَى اللَّهُ وَسَلَمَ عَلَى نَبِيَنَ مُحَمَدُ وَعَلَى عَلِي وَصَحْبِهِ وَس